Well, Tesla's done it again. In their quarter two 2021 earnings call, they revealed that they shattered pretty much all the records of any previous quarter. But what was most fascinating to me was the fact that Elon Musk talked specifically about the chip shortage and how Tesla has gotten around it. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So first of all, the quarter two earnings call was pretty amazing. Uh, the big, big number, I guess, was that Tesla has very, very high vehicle profit margins of approaching, I think it's 28.4%, if I'm remembering properly. And they, they put away, they made a profit of over $1 billion US, which is just astounding, right? So they basically put a billion dollars in the bank. That's not revenue or anything, that is pure profit. So that's pretty astounding. But let's talk specifically about the chip shortage and what Tesla has been able to do and why it really matters. But let's talk specifically about the chip shortage and what Tesla has done to mitigate the problems with the chip shortage and why this really matters. And it actually matters in a bigger picture sense as well. While we're making cars at full speed, the global chip shortage situation remains quite serious. For the rest of this year, our growth rates will be determined by the slowest part in our supply chain, which is a, a there, there are a wide range of chips that are at various times the slowest part in the supply chain. I mean, it's worth noting that if we had uh, vast numbers of vehicles and cells, we, we would not be able to make, make them. Uh, if everything except the chips, we wouldn't be able to make them. The chip supply is fundamentally the governing factor on our uh, output. Um, it is difficult for us to say how long this will last because uh, we, we don't have, it's, 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 this is, this is out of our control, essentially. So as you just heard Elon Musk talking about, what Tesla is constrained by now for, for you know forever since Tesla was kind of created, they have been battery constrained. This is the first time that I've ever heard them say, and maybe quarter one was the same way too, but this is the first time I've ever heard Elon Musk mention that they have been chips constrained as opposed to battery constrained. So, you know, so historically since Tesla's inception, or at least since they started making mass market cars with like the Model S, they have been constrained by the number of batteries that they or their partners like LG and so forth can produce. So that's the limiting factor, right? So if you could create 500,000 cars, but you only have 200,000 batteries, you can create 200,000 cars, right? So that's the limiting factor. What has flipped here is that they now have a supply chain and they now have the materials and they're now able to manufacture enough batteries to actually make more cars than they're able to make because they're waiting on chips. Of course, this begs the question of why is there a chip shortage in the first place? It's not just a chip shortage. There are many, many things in short supply right now, including things like lumber. My goodness, we know we're moving into a new house and we're building some things and we're having to go buy just basic stuff like two by fours. And they're, I think, triple the price that they were maybe two years ago, the last time I was really out shopping for things like two by fours. It's, it's astounding how much they are. So anyway, the chip shortage is particularly nasty, but it's just part of a global supply shortage. I watched a really good cold fusion video and I'll put a link in the description, but basically the problem, there, there are many, many problems, but uh, the big sort of problems are, I mean, things like shipping is actually a problem. Just getting the containers uh, in, on the east, the far east, like China and Taiwan and other countries in that area, they don't have the shipping containers to ship things to the United States because we've got stacks of them here that are not being shipped back to the, to the far east. So, you know, as things as stupid as that, which is causing all sorts of problems in terms of shortages. The chip supply shortage in particular was pretty much the fault of the automotive industry as a whole. And the pandemic was what really, really caused it to kick into high gear. And there's been shortages before this, but in 2020, in the first half of 2020, when automotive manufacturers thought the world was coming to an end and they thought they weren't gonna sell any cars for a very long time, they canceled all of their orders for chips. And right, cars these days are computers on wheels. Even non-EV cars, like gas cars. You've got to have things like airbag chips. You've got to have controller chips. You've got to have entertainment system chips. You've got to have uh, the fuel injector chips. You know, you got to have the IMU, the inertial measurement unit, which is at the basis of the cars kind of knowing where it is, the GPS chips, et cetera, et cetera. They're just full of these embedded chips all over the place in all cars, not just EVs and not just Teslas. So the problem arose basically in the fact that automotive manufacturers said, we don't need these chips. 
And the foundries, there's not that many foundries in the world that manufacture chips because it's very, very difficult and it costs billions of dollars and years to create these foundries. So the foundries then said, well, heck, if they're not gonna order stuff, we'll turn around and we'll make things for other people, right, other customers. So they moved other customers to the front of the line. And the problem then was that then the automotive manufacturers said, hey, actually, we do want those chips after all. And the foundries said, sorry about that. We're already manufacturing chips for other people. You're gonna have to wait six months or nine months or something until we can revamp or retool our supply lines and our foundries to make your chips again. So that is a massive, massive bottleneck that's happened. Now, Tesla avoided a lot of this because number one, they are a startup company and they have been in growth mode even during the terrible pandemic times of the first half of last year. They were still in growth mode and they were still ordering chips. So they were able to get a lot of the chips that they wanted. And of course, their full self-driving hardware, you know, hardware three is a, a custom design chip that Samsung manufactured and they, you know, they said, by all means, keep manufacturing this, right? So they were able to keep manufacturing that during that, and that's a major chip. But the problem is, you know, still things like airbag chips and other stuff like that, that's just basic things that go into all of these vehicles. Some of that Tesla is still at the mercy of the market because these are really, really commodity chips. And so by other companies, you know, Tesla's only making what? They made, a, uh, you know, 500,000 last year cars, right? So that's a blip on the radar of tens of millions of cars that the global market's doing. So even if Tesla's like, make, make all the chips you want, these foundries are like, well, yeah, sure, that's a half a million chips, but we've got, say, 30 million chips from all of the auto manufacturers. That's just a tiny fraction of the 30 million. So we're gonna stop manufacturing, even though you say you, you know, still want them. And as Elon Musk has talked about on several occasions, Asians you know, one part can hold up the entire supply chain and then shut down the factory. And that apparently actually happened in quarter two on several occasions that either the Shanghai or Fremont factory was actually shut down for periods of time simply because they were missing a couple of real basic chips that they needed to put into the cars to continue to, you know, put them out and sell them. So it's really crazy, right? Whatever the slowest thing is, the slowest link in the chain is what determines how fast you can produce cars. So that's the setup for all this. How did Tesla manage to get around this and still have a record-breaking quarter? Well, I think it comes down to four things. Number one is foresight, number two is agility, number three is programming chops, and number four is just plain old determination. So let's start with foresight. Foresight, we've already kind of talked about. Tesla is in growth mode, they're a startup company, and they kept ordering chips while this was all going on last year. So they had perhaps a stockpile of chips for at least a period of time that they've been able to use. And also they've got a continuous relationship with the foundries. So these foundries know that Tesla will take as many of these chips as they will manufacture. So that's a positive by all means. So Foresight definitely had something to do with that. As far as agility is concerned, this has to do with logistics. And basically what happens is that their logistics people have said, let's say that they need an airbag chip or something, right? So they need this chip and they're used to getting it from supplier X, but supplier X has stopped producing enough of these and so there's a shortage. But supplier Y manufactures these chips and so Tesla's logistics teams have been able to go out and ferret out other companies that make these products and say, yeah, we'll take you know a half a million of your chips or something like that, or probably even tens of thousands of chips, right? They're, they're so desperate, they're probably like, just give us whatever you got and we'll do it. So they're extremely agile in the way that they can you know, alter the supply chain and grab whatever chips they need from whatever manufacturers happen to have some at the time. So of course you might say, well, heck, other car companies can do that as well. But there's two factors working against other car companies. Number one is their scale, right? So if you're something like Toyota or Volkswagen where you're making close to 10 million cars per year, that's a lot more chips that you need to be able to keep producing the same number of cars, you know, while Tesla's producing between a half a million and a million per year. So they're growing very rapidly, but it's still a tiny fraction of these other companies, you know, total production runs. But more importantly, I think, is the fact that the agility is related to the programming chops that Tesla has. And people talk about Tesla's AI team, which is just amazing and world-class, but Tesla also has world-class engineers working in their embedded chips and their other software components, and that is critical. So let's take a look at what Tesla had to say in their earnings report about this specific issue. In fact, even achieving the output that we did achieve was uh, only due to an immense effort from people within Tesla. We uh, were able to substitute al alternative uh, chips and then uh, write the firmware uh, in a matter of weeks. It's not just a matter of swapping out a chip. You also have to rewrite the software. So it was an uh, incredibly intense effort of uh, finding new chips, writing new firmware, integrating with the vehicle, and, and testing in order to maintain 
uh, production. Our team has demonstrated an unparalleled ability to react quickly and mitigate disruptions to manufacturing caused by semiconductor shortages. Our electrical and firmware engineering teams remain hard at work designing, developing, and validating 19 new variants of controllers in response to ongoing semiconductor shortages. And by the by, just a quick tangent on this because it's on the same page in the earnings report. Note that Tesla talks about their full self-driving software as well and how they've basically shifted their entire software stack over to the vision-only thing. I think a lot of people have been uh, perhaps underwhelmed with Tesla Vision version 9, but what they're not seeing is the fact that Tesla Vision is a complete rewrite of the stack and it's still better, right? So it's like going back to square one and yet it's still better than the old system. And that has amazing headroom for growth in the future. If you're interested in more on this, I've got some videos from Dr. Carpathy in a recent talk that he gave. So definitely check those out if you're interested. So anyway, back to the embedded chip issue. So Tesla specifically mentions they have 19 variants, which means that they have you know, 19 companies supplying these controller chips, as opposed to in the past, they had perhaps three or four of these companies, right? So they've expanded. They don't mention how many they used to have, but I would imagine they have probably multiplied the number of suppliers by like four times or something like that. What does this mean, right? You can't just take a chip. It's not like a potato chip, right? <laughs> it's not like you can just eat another potato chip instead of the one you had. These kinds of chips require very, very specific low level programming to work in a car. And remember, it's got to work every time. An airbag chip can't fail. It can't be like, oh, whoops, we have a bug in the software and it didn't work properly. So if you have a new airbag controller chip from a different company, you've got to have people who are incredible engineers who are able to get in there and do low level coding, perhaps at the machine level, right? Super low level coding in order to code these chips up and make them integrate in with the rest of the systems as seamlessly as the old ones did. This requires immense engineering chops. So we're not talking about the AI team or something. This is a whole separate team of people that's doing this. And this is not, you know, as sexy as the AI stuff, but it's absolutely critical. You've got to have people who can do this reprogramming work in order to use these other suppliers chips. It's not as simple as going like, ah, here's one chip, here's another chip, either one works in there. It's a whole firmware rewrite in order to make all of this stuff work. And this is why other companies, other auto manufacturers just can't do this. They don't have people with the engineering chops to do this. And quite frankly, they don't have the, um, the, the guts. <laughs> I was thinking of another word, but let's just call it the guts. They don't have the guts to do this either, right? This takes some serious cojones. Uh, to, for, from Tesla in order to say like, yep, we're going to do this. We're going to put it to the, you know, we're going to put the pedal to the metal. We're going to put these things in here. We're going to test it out. We trust our engineers to be able to do a good enough job not to screw this up and not to have recalls in the future because of this. So, and maybe they will, you know, you never know in a year they might be like, oh crap, we have to have recalls. But one of the good things about this is this is software. So if it's a software recall, Tesla happens to have, you know, over the air software updates. So fantastic. So they're able to do this perhaps even under the hood, like nobody even notices. So they never really have to have a recall. They just notice that there's an issue and they're able to fix it on the fly. So anyway, the engineering chops that Tesla has from top to bottom and all across the company are just amazing. And congrats to you guys. I know you're working on something that's not as high profile as AI, but it's pretty darn amazing that you all are that good at your jobs that you're able within weeks to rewrite firmware code that's so absolutely mission critical and make it work. And then finally, we just have the plain old determination. You know, Elon Musk is a taskmaster, but he has got a vision and he is like, we're gonna make this happen. And I think that's infused throughout the company, right? You've got the logistics people, you've got the engineers, you've got the supply chains, all that kind of stuff. You've got probably people out in the field knocking on doors, literally going like, please give us chips, right? So I imagine a, a global sort of tentacles out there just saying like, please give us everything you've got. That level of determination has been what has caused Tesla to actually been able to succeed in an incredibly, you know, the odds were so stacked against them in 2002 or so when they started that they would ever become successful to any extent, much less the most valuable car company in the world right now. And that level of determination is also what's allowing them to get through, not only get through this chip shortage, 
but succeed in amazing ways and break their own records in the past. I expect quarter three is gonna be another record-breaking quarter and quarter four will be as well. Now, it is gonna to be toned down to some extent because again, the chips are a, you know, a limiting factor right now, but Tesla is clearly working as hard as they can, and the, the global chip supply shortage should hopefully start to ease up by sometime around September or October and get a little bit better in the fourth quarter. So I expect quarter three will do really well, but maybe not as well as they would have done otherwise, and then quarter four hopefully will be a bang-up quarter because also, as they said in their quarter two earnings call, they expect both Berlin and um, Austin to be online and producing a limited run of vehicles by the end of the year, so super amazing stuff. So amazing amazing things out of Tesla. I just can't believe that they were able to do as well as they have, given all the problems they've encountered. Anyway, it's an amazing thing. Fantastic job. Congratulations to all the folks working at Tesla from the top to the bottom. You all are just amazing people and all of us customers and shareholders really appreciate it. All right, I hope you found this episode fun and enjoyable. If you did, definitely like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing for more of this. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks. And now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And don't forget about our merch store, which now has physics is the law, everything else is a recommendation, which is a quote by Elon Musk, as well as other t-shirts, mugs, tumblers, etc, etc. Check it out in the description. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate all of your support. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you check out the links in the description, you can see how going shopping for a car, a solar roof, or a battery pack, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. And as always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.